What's up YouTube? Matt with Matt Builds coming at you with another video. Today we're going to be doing a little bit of work on the Toyota Tacoma here. Um, I'm going to be doing the clutch mod. This thing has an accumulator on the clutch and it is terrible. Um, I'm used to driving the old school clutches. I grew up driving five speeds and manual transmissions and uh, I've heard a lot of good things about doing this. So we're going to get back there on the tailgate. I'm going to show you what parts I'm using and everything that I'm going to be using. And we're going to show you the tools that I'm going to use for this job. And then we're going to dive underneath the truck. So y'all get ready. We're going to get into it. So here's the parts I'm going to be using. I went ahead and bought this little short pre-made brake line. Um, there's the part number there. I picked this up from a local auto zone. This is the coupling I'm going to be using. Uh, and there's the part number again right there. Again, picked up from a local auto zone. Dot three brake fluid and brake cleaner to get everything cleaned back up when we're done. The tools that I'm going to be using doing this uh, is going to be a 10 millimeter. This is going to be for the fittings on the accumulator. And for the new line, I used a 12 millimeter uh, wrench. This was for the bolts that held the accumulator on. I used a 13 millimeter. This was for the coupling that went on the new brake line or clutch line. Uh, ratchet, I used a 12 millimeter shallow wall and a deep wall socket. And I did use a little flathead screwdriver. That was just to pop the little rubber cap off the bleeder on the uh, slave cylinder down there. And then the tubing benders, uh, just a cheap little set from Harbor Freight work. And then I did end up needing an extractor because mine had to be difficult and had to get rounded off and fight me. The fitting did. So uh, I just had to show it who's boss. But yes, that's the tools that I used. All right, we're under the truck. So this accumulator is right back in here. So we need to pull this heat shield off. A lot of people I've seen pull the drive shaft. Uh, we're gonna try and do it without pulling the drive shaft. I think it's doable. Uh, probably be a little aggravating to get to, but we have one, two, there's one bolt. Let's see if I can get up in there and show you guys. Right here. And then there's another bolt right up. Let me get around here. Right up there. So we have four bolts we're going to take off. They're all 12 millimeter. Uh, I've already started breaking mine loose. So this one, this one, and this one I was able to break free with a wrench. Um, this one I had to have a ratchet to kind of get up in there. And I had to kind of work around that uh, O2 sensor plug and everything right there. Uh, so yeah, you may need a ratchet or something, do a little finagling to get to that one, but all four are, are, are uh, doable without taking off that drive shaft. All right, we got the cover off. This is going to be your accumulator right here. So we're going to have to take loose three bolts this one this one and this one so wait, there it goes that one I've already broke these loose I kind of loosen them up so you could have a visual aid as to see which ones that I'm taking loose um, and then the top of the clutch line is going to run down into the top of this accumulator and then we're going to take this line right here loose and that um, brake line that I got we're gonna bend it to go from here straight back to this line right here and we're gonna use that coupler right here at this joint uh, so we're gonna get this taken off I'm gonna go ahead and get this completely taken off and go ahead and get these two lines broke loose right here and I'm hoping with that rust that I don't really mean break but uh hopefully it should come on out of there um, and then we're gonna go ahead and make up I got a piece of wire like a clothes hanger we're going to kind of make a you know couple bends in that clothes hanger in the shape that we want that new line and then we'll go back to the tailgate and get it bent up and we're back up top here so I had a little bit of an issue and I kind of thought I might but uh, trying to get this bottom fitting out of the slave cylinder uh, kind of wrung it off um, and because I was doing it with the drive shaft in place and the exhaust and everything's right there, right in the way, uh, 
I wasn't able to get like vice grips or anything on it. So I snipped the line right here with a pair of cutters and I use this wonderful tool they've came out with. I didn't have a set of metrics. This was a 10 millimeter. I didn't have a set of metrics, but the three eighths got right on there and, and did the work. So uh, yeah, pretty much just snipped that off, hammered this onto the end of it, or I say hammered, I tapped it on there and then was able to use this extractor to get it out of there. Uh, now the top, the top, no rust whatsoever. It came right out. Uh, it's a little awkward to get to. It can be done. Um, but yeah, the top came right out. And again, it was just those three bolts. Now, uh, this is a tip. <laughs> so at least leave like this bolt in or this bolt in when you try to take this loose. I took all three of mine out and ended up having to fight to get this bolt back in because when I tried to turn this top fitting loose, the whole accumulator was trying to move. So I do recommend leaving a bolt in. Uh, if you want to go ahead and break it loose while you're breaking the others loose, um, and take the other two out, I would, because once you start cracking this loose, brake fluid or yeah, brake fluid's going to start running. Um, so at least leave this top bolt right here in. That way you have something to keep it from wanting to turn. So I was going to do like I've seen others do, and use a clothes hanger to get mine but I actually brought it back here on the tailgate and just use my benders and just bend it to fit exactly what I need uh, and it's actually turned out really nice so uh, and what I used to bend it was just a little cheap Harbor Freight tubing bender uh, bent incredibly easy so that's pretty much it we got that done and we're gonna go back underneath there now put this in place now what I do plan to do is because it is a little difficult to get to I'm gonna take this coupling right here and go ahead and put this on the existing line that's coming down um, up underneath the hood I'm gonna put this coupling on first and go ahead and tighten it down to that top line and then I will get this bottom in because once I get this up in there it's gonna be a little bit difficult to try to turn because this isn't gonna want to turn once I get it tightened down on this one so we're going to put this one on first, this coupling on first. We're going to put this on first and go ahead and get that tightened down. And then I'll be able to screw this one into it. So we're going to get up underneath there and I'll be back at you. All right, guys, we're back underneath. So this is the coupling. So basically I screwed this onto this fitting first and got it good and tight. Then I was able to add my brake line and just screw it in. Uh, it would have been a little bit of difficult if I would have screwed this coupling onto this. I would have had to have turned this top nut here, which is a little awkward to get to. But with me putting this coupling on this nut first, uh, I was able to spin the coupling instead of having to spin it top nut. And then I just had to put a wrench on this top nut to, to hold it still. And then I was able to hold the coupling while I tightened up this bottom one. So it is now routed, uh, let me get this wrench out of the way. So it is now routing straight over to the slave cylinder. Uh, right now I'm actually in the process of bleeding out this clutch. Um, I do want to kind of go over that process. Uh, but right now I have this bleeder kind of cracked loose. Uh, let's see if I, there we go. I kind of got that bleeder cracked loose. Uh, so it's letting air run out of that bleeder. Um, and it's pretty much just gonna bleed, slowly bleed the whole system. I'm letting gravity work right now. Uh, once I start getting some fluid out of there, then I will actually start the, the bleeding process with someone you know, pumping the clutch and that sort of thing. Uh, but I kinda wanna show that process too. But right now I'm just gonna let gravity work. Actually, you can see a little bit of fluid starting to come out now. So uh, we're gonna just let gravity continue to work for the moment and uh, we'll be back with the clutch process, our bleeding process. All right, the biggest thing you want to remember is keep this full the entire time you're bleeding this clutch. Um, now, I've pretty much ran enough that I pretty much did a clutch change, a fluid change on it, uh, just all fresh fluid. Uh, but you want to keep this thing topped off the entire time. If this, this uh, master cylinder runs dry, you're starting all over again. 
So make sure you keep this uh, topped off. What I did was at, between each time of bleeding it, I came up top here and just made sure it was topped off. Um, so I'm gonna go up underneath and kind of show you the process of what you're gonna need to do. Um, and then we're gonna get everything cleaned up. I got some brake cleaner. We're gonna clean up all that fluid. It was a little hard to film during that process because I'm underneath the truck trying to hold a camera, trying to turn a wrench and I had brake fluid uh, coming at me the whole time so but I do want to kind of show this process because I noticed not a lot of people show this process so again mine is already bled um, but you want to just you can just leave that cap off to let the air kind of bubbles come back out if it needs to uh, but make sure you keep this full all right this is your bleeder right here so you're going to want to put the wrench on this uh, and get someone I got someone inside the vehicle to kind of help me um, now tell them don't freak out because when you break this bleeder loose or in the very beginning, especially, uh, that clutch pedal is going to go to the floor and stay there. So what you're going to want to do is once you kind of gravity bled it out and you see some fluid coming out of here, uh, you, for the most part, you've gotten most of the air out of there. So you're going to want to put your wrench on here and I just put a box in on there and just kind of left it hanging. And you're going to want to get someone in there to push that clutch pedal to the floor. Uh, you can try to pump it a couple times, but most likely in the beginning, it's not going to have anything on it. Uh, so get someone to make sure it stays on the floor and break this bleeder nut loose. Just crack it loose, you know, one or two turns and you're going to see some, you're going to hear some air and some fluid come out of this bleeder right here. While they are still holding it to the floor, tighten this back up. Once you get this tightened back up, then you can pump it, you know up and down and again in the beginning it's going to probably go on the floor and stay on the floor so once they pump it a couple times push it and hold it again just like bleeding, bleeding your brakes and then break this bleeder nut loose again uh, again you may have to if you left the drive shaft in like me you may have to turn it a couple times to kind of get it but uh, you're going to get some air and some fluid it may take five, six times. I, I'm not sure exactly how many times it's gonna take. It just depends on how much air you get in your system. Uh, but eventually you're gonna come down here, they're gonna pump that clutch pedal and you're gonna start getting some resistance on it and they're gonna hold it to the floor. When you break it loose, it's gonna stay on the floor and you're gonna get nothing but fluid coming out of this, out of the tip of this thing. So once you've done that, what I did is I did it over and over again until I got no air. And once I got no air, I did it about two or three more times just to make sure. I mean, brake fluid's cheap, and uh, it was just extra reassurance to make sure I got all that air out of there. So now we have brake fluid. I mean, it squirted everywhere. So I got some brake cleaner down here. We're going to hit it off some brake cleaner, and I'm on plastic. So uh, we're going to hit it with some brake cleaner, get all that brake fluid off of there so it doesn't eat no paint or nothing up. And uh, then we're going to take it down the road and see how this thing works. We got everything rinsed off. All the brake fluid rinsed off. Got that little rubber boot popped back on there. I did have to use a flathead to get that off. One thing you are going to want to do is once you, in those last few times when they're pumping it and they have a good put clutch pedal, check all your fittings. Just make sure you don't have any leaks on any of those fittings. And over the next... Probably, I'm going to say a week or two, uh, when I get to work, I'm just going to check it. And when I go to leave work, I'll check it and make sure, you know, or, you know, something like that. When I get home, I'll check it. Just make sure I don't have any leaks before I head out on the road. Uh, and I'm going to keep a little bit of brake fluid with me while I do that. But that's pretty much it, guys. You can see so much cleaner up in there. Uh, I did not put that little heat shield back on because everything is kind of hard to tell in the video. Everything's kind of tucked up in there pretty nice. So, uh, I mean, if something's going to hit it, it's going to hit that O2 sensor too. So I got more things to worry about, uh, rather than it hitting that metal line. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. We're going to go out on the road now. I'm going to take you guys with me and we're going to see what this, uh, accumulator delete mod actually does. All right, guys, we're taking it on down the road. I just wanted to kind of get my first impressions. Uh, I mean this, so this truck the clutch used to release i'm going down my driveway i'm not driving or anything uh not on the road uh so this clutch used to release i mean almost at the top 
like almost all the way out of it before it would release. Uh, my wife made the comment multiple times that it was crazy how the to to crank it you'd have to have the clutch on the floor you know to activate the clutch switch but it wouldn't release till almost at the top uh you can feel this clutch starting to let go now almost i mean within a couple of inches off the floor you can feel this clutch starting to grab uh so i'm gonna go out on the road a little bit here i'm gonna get on this back road here and uh i just wanted to kind of film my my first impression of it and i mean it is totally different totally different truck i wish i could get this in the video somehow um i want to kind of show i mean going through the gears it is i used to get jumpy feelings uh i mean it just feels when they say it feels so much more consistent it really does um wow i'm i'm kind of mad at myself that i didn't do this before now uh i mean it's it feels like a more conventional clutch uh guys don't procrastinate anymore do this mod um it's not very expensive it is a little intimidating uh kind of with the with the whole uh bleeding the clutch and everything but wow it is so worth it so worth it uh, I used to get kind of jumpiness between the you know gears and at things at times. I mean, it's so, it's so smooth. Uh, I get, I would get a jumpiness at times, and it wasn't anything consistent. It wasn't like, oh, it would do this between first and second, or you know anything like that, or oh, it does it if you if you don't get out of it just right or what have you. It wasn't anything consistent. It was just constantly. One minute it would shift great, and the next minute you'd have some jerkiness of people looking at you like do you really know how to drive a straight drive i'm like been driving them my whole life uh it it is is a world of difference you guys if you're if you're procrastinating don't procrastinate anymore do this mod uh but i'm gonna wrap this video up i know you're probably tired of me talking now but uh i'm gonna wrap it up but share this video put this video out there i i, I really want people to to go forward with this um but anyways hope you guys liked it please remember to like share and subscribe and we'll see y'all on the next one.